Hello and welcome to this Laserverse database video tutorial. I'm doing this on Linux because, well, but it also goes for Windows. In this tutorial I'm going to show you how to connect to a database with the database components in Laserverse. This tutorial is about SQL databases as opposed to local databases because they have much better features, backup and security, and you can support thousands of users with them. Further, SQL databases support triggers, procedures, generators and other things that can help you ease the implementation of your application. Let's have a look at the SQL databases Lasers supports. First, on your SQL DB tab, you've got TPQ connection. This is uh, for PostgreSQL databases. PostgreSQL is a very well known open source database, uh, it's, but it's not very popular. Next, you've got Oracle. Oracle is a very well known uh, proprietary database. It's uh, used by big companies. LBC is not a database, but it's an interface between the uh, database and your application. You can uh, connect to some uh, to some uh, database with it. Then we've got MySQL 4, 4.0, 4.1, and MySQL 5. 5 is the current uh, version. Uh, MySQL is a very well known, uh, very popular open source database and you can also uh, get commercial licenses for it and support. And uh, MySQL is uh, often used in combination with the Apache web server and PHP for advanced websites. Okay, and this is SQLite. Um, SQLite is a very lightweight database, and um, but it's not very uh, well fit for busy multi-user environments. And then finally, we've got Firebird. Firebird is originally um, developed by Borland um, as uh, interbase, and now it's um, further developed in the open source. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to connect to Firebird, but the same story goes for the other databases. Before you can do anything, you have to install a database. And I've installed Firebird and MySQL. They both support command line interface and a graphical user interface. Here in this graphical user interface, you see the employee database. Uh, that's an example da database from uh, Firebird. Uh, it's got everything, domains, exceptions, generators, procedures, triggers and views. And in the tables you've got the country table. I made a select statement already on this uh, on this table. As you can see You've got Switzerland with a Swiss franc and Italy with a lira, France with a French franc, Do Germany with a Dutch mark, Netherlands with a Gelder and Belgium with a Belgian franc. These were all currencies that were uh, used before the euro was introduced. So this this example is already more than ten years old. For MySQL. You've got the MySQL Query Browser Graphical User Interface. I've done a query here, limited to 1000 records. And um, this is the command line interface. MySQL got some extensions like uh, being able to uh, do a select 5 times 9. That's uh, uh, just a calculation and you get the result here 45 and this is a uh, MD5 hash of the 
value test so you can uh, encrypt it with MD5 uh, uh, encryption and this is the result okay now we can show you how to use the the components first we put on a connection component don't worry about all these uh, properties we're just going to use the properties you need to connect to the database first we can put in the host name as we're working on the same machine as uh, the database is on we can put in localhost in here next the uh, database name uh, I'm using a alias for this testfp the aliases are in, in Linux uh, under the slash etc directory uh, slash firebird directory uh, you find the aliases um, file and in there you can put aliases now we can connect uh, to the database and uh, we can do that by um, a login prompt if you make this property true you get a login box when you start the application but I'm not gonna do that I'm gonna put in the username here it's TO and the password okay now we can try to connect by setting this property to true it stays true if um, if you cannot connect for some reason it, it goes false and you get an error box now we can put on a transaction if you're a database supports transactions you put on a transaction you connect it and that's all you have to do with it next we put on a query component we connect it to the connection and we can put in an SQL query okay select from test tab we can try it here okay now we can activate the query by setting this to true again when you get uh, when you get an error this stays false and uh, you get an error box so you can find out what is going on okay now we can uh, show the result of the que query with the inner data control but before we can do that we have to uh, connect the data source to our query so we data set uh, property of the data source we set to the query and then we connect a data control to the data source this is database grid Looks better. I'm going to stretch it so uh, we get a nice interface, a uh, nice uh, layout of our interface. Um <coughs> when we put the data source of this data source property of this database grid to the data source we've got, we immediately get the result of the query. I typed in in here this is design time but in design time you cannot move the scroll bars I'm going to uh, connect a navigator component to it just um, set the data source property to the data source and it's connected um, you can put on other 
data controls like this database text it's a label um, connected to the data source and then we have to put the database field in but uh, by the connection we already get the data name uh, the field the names of the fields in the in this uh, in this uh, selection box okay now I'm gonna add a db edit I'm gonna stretch it a little so we can see the some more text in it data source is data source one data field you can select this text from it and you see this uh, this value is also in the this in this edit box. Okay, now we're going to compile this uh, application. Again, successfully built. And here's your runtime screen. Now we can move the the scroll bars. This is the last record. Um, can move with this the db navigator you can go to the first to the last record okay the last record is 3395 um, I'm going to use that because I'm going to show how to connect to a different machine you just change the name of the database uh, of the host the machine where your uh, external database is on and I'm gonna disconnect from our current machine and connect to the new machine now our query is uh, inactivated because we lost uh, connection I'm gonna connect, reconnect it again I'm gonna reactivate the query again So and here's the data from the new from the other machine. Gonna run it. Now here are, uh, are uh, records from the other machine. You can see the last record is 3941 as opposed to 3995 from the other machine so this is a different database and we can use the navigator okay that's all I'm going to show you that it also runs without laser rest. these are the project files this is the executable. It's 18.6 megabytes, so it's quite a big uh, file size. And I'm going to launch it, and here it is. It's running. Okay, that's all. Thanks for your attention.